You must make sure everything is straight. Use a T-square to verify the positions before continuing. When the glue dries, the bulkheads will be securely fixed in place. The third step of plug construction is to make the surface for the frame. We had decided to make the plug solid. Just surfacing the bulkheads wasn't practical. Filling the plug with expanding polyurethane foam is ideal. Once cured, it is easily cut and carved. It is relatively inexpensive and will expand to fill even oddly shaped cavities. To save on foam, we didn't fill the entire plug, just the surface perimeter. It was easy to tape newspaper to the bottom of the frame, creating loaf pan type cavities when the frame was flipped over. Pouring into these square cavities was straightforward, so we began there. You have to seal all the edges with tape to prevent the foam from draining out. The foam is a liquid which you pour into the cavity. It will expand to 30 times its volume in the liquid state. If the size of the cavity is known, divide that by 30 to determine the volume of foam to mix. More often, the size is unknown, so pour just enough to cover the bottom uniformly until you gain experience with how the foam expands. We continued mixing and pouring until the bottom of the frame was filled. As you can see, some sections were filled in multiple pours, while others rose properly the first time. All of them will be trimmed later to a uniform height. After the bottom was filled, we tipped the frame on its side and taped in newspaper like we did on the bottom. However, this merely created broad and shallow cavities which followed the outer contour of the car. We soon found that these types of cavities do not contain the foam well enough, so we did not construct any more. We were able to finish the side this way by making multiple pours, but it was neither quick nor clean. We discovered a better way. We filled the inside with newspaper and stuff to create the in inner pocket. And all we're doing now is coming along and loosely applying newspaper, loose enough so that it can expand and have the foam come out beyond it so that we can cut it off later and shape it. The opposite side and the rest of the frame were filled from above using this technique. At this point, the surface is quite rough. You want to make sure that you have overfilled and have enough to trim. Adding or filling starts becoming more difficult from this point forward. The newspaper on the outside will simply be shaved off with the excess foam. Now you will begin the fourth step of building your plug, which is carving it to the correct shape. Saws and knives easily cut the foam, but it cannot be hot wired. You want to trim away the excess and sand the surface smooth. Remember that the plywood bulkheads provide the actual finished dimensions, so do not gouge the foam deeper than the plywood. Trim as much as possible with the saws before trying to sand. Scott used an electric belt sander to quickly trim the excess foam and newspaper which the saws did not remove from the frame. The belt sander was fast, but in some areas he removed too much material. Try to keep your cutting surface on the bulkheads, or you cannot gouge the foam. A straight 2x4, about 4 feet long, with sandpaper glued to the surface, makes a great sanding block for the larger and flatter sections. Also, polyurethane foam is easily sanded using another block of itself. This works particularly well in areas of detail. Before long, you can see that the plug is taking shape nicely. Most of the newspaper has been removed and the foam has closed the gaps between the bulkheads. Two days later, the entire plug has been filled in and shaped. Even to the casual observer, it is beginning to resemble the planned shape. In some areas, the foam was shaved too low, and in others, air pockets were trapped. These can be filled with a standard auto body filler, or you can mix phenolic microballoons with your molding resin to create a spreadable, sandable paste filler. We had body filler on hand, so it was used on the areas we needed to reconstruct. The surface does not have to be perfect, but it should not be higher than the surrounding foam. Once all the high spots on the foam were removed, the plug was skinned. This is the fifth step of building the plug. The surface has to be completely non-porous and pretty resilient. Typically, it is fiberglassed. This mat layer serves two functions. First, it protects the foam from accidental crushing during handling. Second, and more importantly, it provides a solid base for all other surfacing compounds to be applied later. Thoroughly saturate pieces of fiberglass mat, then lay them in place. Begin with torn chunks, which approximate the space between the bulkheads you are going to fill. It may be helpful to paint some resin over the foam before applying it 
in order to fill many of the tiny holes. The foam holds quite a bit of air because the cells were cut open during the shaping process. Try to work out the larger air pockets by stippling with a brush or wiping with your gloved fingers. A groove saturation roller also helps to remove the air. Mix batches of resin in quantities which can be applied before the cure sets in. Begin with small pots until you become familiar with the cure cycle. I continue to work from batch to batch and am not concerned with how much of the fiberglass has been cured. As I go along, I make sure that each piece is laid properly without trapping air. That way, if the resin does set up, I don't worry about poor adhesion problems. One even coat of fiberglass is all that is needed to coat the plug for protection. If necessary, extra layers may be added to fill minor low spots. Work consistently to cover all exposed foam. The body filler can be covered just like the foam. I worked alternately between filling, shaping, and skinning the foam until the entire framework was uniform. When the entire framework has been skinned, it needed to be lightly sanded to remove any stray fibers and promote good adhesion for other surfacing compounds. This is also a good time to look for air pockets which need to be ground out and repaired. The portions of mat which were ground out over the air pockets are being replaced. Other areas are being filled because too much foam was removed during the trimming stage. Notice that the mat saturates quicker when placed on a non-porous surface than it did over the foam. It is possible to work faster now, but still watch out for air bubbles. I mentioned it earlier, but this is a demonstration of a groove saturation roller at work. It has no equal for quickly and thoroughly removing air from a chopped mat surface. Look carefully for areas where the fiberglass did not stick to the foam. These areas will feel spongy when pressed and must be cut away. It is now time to proceed to the sixth step of plug construction. 